as a returning board member, uh, since I didn't decide in New York, I am very pleased to be in your company this afternoon and to see everybody's smiling face. But let me talk uh, quickly about what's happening at the UN. So I've been representing the uh, American Humanist Association at the UN for probably at least the last five years. And I've seen a real evolution um, uh, regarding even the understanding of what it is to be a humanist or to be an atheist or to be a non-believer on the special committee of uh, 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 essentially the rights of, of, of religious people in this world to not be persecuted by other religious people. Because what they, and the important thing about having a seat at this table is to always remind people that it's not just the religious versus the religious. It's the religious versus the secular, and as John was saying, with the, with, with the murders and uh, the laws, the blasphemy laws, uh, that really do impede human rights. So the evolution that I've seen, and actually, let me say this. Uh, I have a lot of criticism of the United Nations as a world body in its current form. However, a world without the UN would be a horrific place. So, you know, for all my concerns about what's happening in the world and how the UN as a political body is being used, uh, I do see an evolution in, in the understanding of what it means to be a non-believer and to be represented at the table. For the first time in five years, at their last um, uh, meeting of freedom of religion and belief, they had the special reporter for human rights, for minority rights, and for religious rights. And each of these special reporters mentioned humanists and atheists for the first time and acknowledged that our lives has have as much value as anyone else's life on the planet. And so you see that turn uh, in, the, in the speaking of it. And now, you have to remember, the, 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 uh, this, this one main committee is filled with people, probably there's 75 people on this committee, and they're from you know religions and philosophical points of view, uh, which have nothing to do with atheism, and it's always, oh, poor me, with no acknowledgement of this. And the other criticism that I have is this idea of somehow, and the UN sort of pushes this, is that religion is actually part of the solution to the problem. Yes. Okay, and I've said many times that if you look at who's really creating the violence, it's not the secularists. Yeah. It's not the humanists. It's not the people who understand, uh, as I think most of the people in this room do, uh, what it's like to live in this world one time and to want to make it a better place for each other and for the future future generations. Period. Yeah. You know, with no uh, enslavement to uh, okay. another world. So, um, so the good news is is that we see change. The hard news is, is that it's not fast enough. Uh, and that's why the AHA, and I think, well now it's called um, Humanist International, but it was the IHEU, uh, has kept the pressure on. And why it's my responsibility to keep the pressure on. Because it's very easy to forget us in this room. It's very easy to ignore the people in this room and the 1.3 billion people on the planet who subscribe to no faith at all. Okay, um, and so it's messy, it's dysfunctional at times, but as an optimist, <laughs> I truly believe that the more we are activists and uh, are aggressive, not in a negative way, but just aggressive in making sure that our human rights and civil rights are mentioned and enforced as equal to anyone else, uh, we will see a continued understanding of what it means to be an atheist of the world body and a humanist of the world body. So, gotta keep going. It doesn't yeah. end. It doesn't end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.